Hello and welcome back to RimWorld. Last time, uh, we brought in a new mod all about leadership, and Bradley and Miss Magar are now the official leaders of this colony. Also, officially actually democratically elected, which you know, that's probably a step up from the previous autocracies, but mm, it's arguable, it's arguable. The autocracies were pretty efficient, it has to be said. Anyway, um, so it just so happens that I've been going on what may or may not be called a mod spree in uh, RimWorld, and yeah, that means that we have some more stuff. It's not much more stuff yet, but I, I got a nice thing whereby we have a few more turrets available to us as soon as I figure out where security is. Here we go. Right now, all we have is a shallow moat that we can put in, which is pretty good, I'm gonna say. It slows down enemies, but what we really want is to stop doing this stupid ship antimatter reactor uh, research and go into this gun complex research. So what we have here is a whole new set of turrets that we can put into our defensive line, including, and this is the kicker, this is, this is the one that I really wanted, uh, turrets that are actually manned by people. So we got like a nice minigun turret we can set in the defensive line somewhere and just tear people to pieces with it. It's going to be so amazingly beautiful. But, of course, we have to get the research first. And until, and until we get there, we do need to probably do a little bit of moat work here. So these moats are pretty simple stuff. They don't really cost anything for us to make. But they do slow enemies down when they try to get over them. So I'm feeling, what do you think? I'm feeling like a double moat. I'm concerned that in some way this is going to severely impact um, basically all forms of efficiency in the colony, given that um, I'm pretty sure it's gonna slow down our colony members as well, but you know what? You gotta do what you gotta do, you know? We'll leave a few open areas for the, oh. Oh, really? Oh, really, that doesn't support moats? Are you serious? I don't care if that su doesn't support moats. I swear to goodness, I'm going to get moats on there. If it's the last thing I do. Huh. How do I actually get rid of that? I wonder. It seems like we need to get rid of this stone in order to actually dig a moat in here, so I'm gonna see how we can possibly do that. So the first strategy, we're gonna put down a floor and then take it out. Hopefully that'll make dirt. I can assure you of nothing here. We're just gonna make things up, but anyway. Soon enough, we will have a nice shallow moat system. They'll probably be made by like Bradley or Longnose or something, and they'll just get at it. Aiden, where are you going? Digging compacted machinery? Have fun. Ah, oh, dude, there's also a thrombo. Ah, oh, does anybody wanna kill that thrombo? When I ask that, I mean, I really wanna kill that thrombo. Okay, people, everyone, two, to the uh, hunting quarters, which I guess is now a thing. We are all about to get out there and we are going to legitimately hunt up a thrombo because I'm gonna level with you. Thrombos cost so much money, it's ridiculous. We kill that thing, we sell its horn, we're gonna get mad rich like nobody's business. I know it's like arguably one of the most majestic and beautiful creatures in existence, but you know, Money, getting filthy rich, is way more important than any form of, like, beautiful creature that we could possibly deal with. Okay. Everyone's gonna get in, like, a standard crescent formation here. We're gonna have Cherie do some, uh, sniping work. And we're just gonna open fire on the thrombo. Now, it does have to be said, thrombos are pretty dangerous creatures, so... When it does eventually... Are you serious? Oh, God, Cherie, why did you shoot Aiden? Cherie, stop shooting, go save Aiden. Oh my goodness, you guys are such idiots. <laughs> this colony is just a bunch of dumb people. Ah, literally, first shot, Cherie just blows Aiden's face off. 
I don't understand what you guys are doing. Do you understand how to use guns? I know it's not necessarily the easiest thing to aim a rifle, but, you know, it's not that complicated. And, I mean, you guys should be training with these things. Fedosha is booking it. Oh, Fedosha is uh, apparently now dead. Please stop shooting each other, guys. I swear. Magar, you can't... This is going far worse than I ever supposed it would. Oh, my goodness. What? Oh, is everyone... Oh, my... Oh. Oh! Bradley, no! Okay. Um, I'm sorry. Did you see anything? I didn't see anything. Nothing happened. What, what, are, you, uh, what, are, you, what are you... What are you on about? What? Uh, I am so glad we live in a civilization that doesn't think that it's a good idea to shoot thrombos. You know, all of those stinking civilizations that think killing majestic nature is a good idea... You know, they, they can just get out of here. We are so much more enlightened than that. We're never going to attack some sort of amazingly majestic and incredibly, incredibly dangerous creature as a thrumbo. No, that's never going to happen. Okay, that was really bad. I'm just going to note that was atrociously terrible. Oh, well, this moat system seems to be slightly worse than it was before. I'm going to level with you. We'll work it out. We'll work it out. We do still need to figure out the whole rock thing, but that's, you know, a matter of a bit of testing. So, um, we've learned a very valuable lesson here today. That lesson is, number one, never, ever, ever mess with a thrombo, because those things are vicious. They tore to death basically everyone, and also Cherie shot Aiden in the back. Arguably has nothing to do with, um... The fact that we were fighting a thrombo and everything to do with the fact that Cherie is just a terrible, terrible aim. Like, in a way that cannot be conceived. Ah, Dude, there is just legit raw human meat just sitting in our freezer right now next to all the food. In fact, in the food freezer. You know, there could be some mix-ups over this. I'm kind of concerned, actually. The people in our colony are not necessarily known for being the most intelligent of people, just saying. So, um, I'm slightly concerned that things will not go well regarding the human meat that's just, that's just casually sitting in there. Oh, who's Miso? Miso? Who's Miso? Oh, who fed Miso human meat? Who did that? You don't just casually feed... Oh... You don't just casually feed your people. Oh. Wait, no, I guess. Miso? You're a can. Oh, he's a cannibal. Okay, I, I guess. Okay. In the end, Wilkins. I guess that was a good idea. I'm pretty sure it was a Wilkins who fed him because it's basically her job to do that. I guess that was a good idea. It was a diplomatic move. I didn't realize that Miso was actually a cannibal. Um, on one hand, Wilkins. Where is Wilkins? There you are. On one hand, Wilkins, great thinking. On the other hand, never, never, never feed another prisoner human meat. I can't even. That is terrible. You're not getting any human meat when you join the colony, you know. I'm also totally going to make you dead soon enough. He's just such a drain on resources. In saying that, we have so many resources right now. Our chances of terrible, terrible death are very, very slim. Um, okay, so we're getting that research done for the turrets. I really want those turrets, like, right now. Because I want to put those in the defensive line. I want to see what they look like. I want to get people on them. I want to, like, I don't know, shoot up. A squirrel or something. I'm pretty sure that's going to be a thing. Ooh. Fedosha and Wilkins are new lovers. Oh. Why? I mean, do you have anything in common? Well, no, I don't think so. I mean, Wilkins is kind of like our... She's basically our charity worker. She's the person who's all pacifistic. And Fedosha is literally... Basically, the only thing about her is that she's a vicious, vicious brawler. I guess, I guess it's true uh, that opposites attract. 
I don't, I don't. You two do your thing. I'm not even, I'm not even judging. Maybe eventually we'll actually get to be able to use the marriage spot. I was just under the assumption that there would be no relationships in the colony because, you know, it's really hard to have relationships when people are dying like left, right, and center. But there you go, there you go. Um, let's see, Bradley, what are you doing right now? What are you building? Bradley is apparently, I guess, oh, he's building the classroom. That's actually a legitimate thing to be building right now. Can you possibly finish the teacher's table so that people can actually, you know, do some, do some learning in here? Because all of the chairs that you're building are nice, but without the actual teacher's table, nothing's gonna get done in that room. The teacher's table is kind of the only purpose for the room. So that, sh once that actually gets completed, that should mean that people will actually start learning. There we go. I assume, oh, we got a schedule. Uh, blue teacher, red teacher. Assign teacher roles to leaders on the button below. Okay. Click on the cycles. Okay. Oh, I see. So Bradley is officially the red teacher. And I guess Magar is going to be the blue teacher. And we'll what? Oh, I see. Cool. We can set like a couple classes in here. We can have Bradley, then Magar, then a couple shorter classes. So we'll have like a two hour class in the morning for Bradley, a uh, like seven to eight. And then I guess that's like, oh wait, these are days of the season. Oh, these are entire days. In that case, I think we'll just uh, section it like this. We'll have every other day, we'll have everyone do their thing. And that should be nice. There we go. So on the third and fourth day of every month, um, Bradley and then Magar will be teaching and it just keeps going like that. I guess we just messed up the order. Uh, Magar's always first, then Bradley because I like symmetry and that is how it is. There we go. That is our official teaching schedule. And on the 15th, just some random person goes and does it. There we go. That's where it's at. And the lesson starts at 1500. That should be fine. Oh man, we're going places. We're going places. When's the next actual class going to be? It's the fourth right now. So it should be on the seventh. So in like two days time, this colony will have its first class run officially by uh, Magar, who's going to be teaching something. What kind of stuff do you teach Magar? So it's only levels eight and above. So she's going to be teaching shooting, which is going to be... I don't know about you, but that is kind of important for these idiots to learn how to do. Art artistic stuff, research, and growing, which is going to be brilliant. Magar is like the ultimate teacher. And then Bradley will teach something. I don't know. I'm sure I'll do something useful. Bradley... Can you, like, build this moat? I really want to see this moat get built. I don't mean to be that guy. I know it's really important that we get a classroom, but can we see this moat? Oh, what is it? Oh, look, it's water. That's it. It's just water. It's got a walk speed of 25%. That is solid. So now when... I think we're basically going to be completely impervious to any form of tribes people. Because those guys basically exclusively use melee weapons. And if they have to run across a double moat to try to get to us... Oh, I don't know about you, but I don't think they're going to be standing a single chance. Not in the slightest, people. They're going to get torn to pieces. And we're going to have to clean out the moat. And we're not just going to have to clean out the moat, but we're going to have to, like, switch out the water. Because it's going to be covered in blood. And it's just going to be all like a red moat. But, you know, I mean, a red moat is intimidating. But not really the most aesthetically pleasing thing. And for the people actually in the colony, they need that like aesthetic, um, nice blue moat. So we're going to have to like put all of the water into, I don't know, this. This will be our cesspool. And then we'll get new water from, I don't know, moat pond right over here. Oh, it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be beautiful and also terrible. It looks like Long Nose is actually building the ship structural beam. I, I don't know, Long Nose, if you really are, like, committed to extensive work on that, but... Oh, my word, look at this! 
Literally everyone is here. Oh, he's teaching about medicine? Oh my word, Bradley, this is beautiful. People are gonna get learning? Like, what kind of teaching is going on here? Are people, like, really learning stuff? Learns times 33%. I don't know if they're actually learning anything here. I presume they did. I mean, I, I would just assume so. I don't know how exactly I would actually check that, but there we go. Nice. We've got the first ship structural beam in place. That is beautiful. Now we just kind of, you know, need all of the other researches for it, which are, you know, not quite as important as making awesome turrets for our defensive line because... I don't know about you, but if I have a choice between a spaceship and a minigun, it's probably going to be a minigun. It's much easier to use a minigun than it is to use a spaceship. And, I don't know, arguably less dangerous. That's, that's a bit questionable, actually, because a minigun is pretty dangerous, even for the user. I mean, if you're not properly trained in the use of a minigun, it's probably not going to go all too well for you, but... You know, I'm under the assumption that it's going to be a lot harder to use a spaceship. That's generally a thing. Uh, anyway, the classroom is now basically up and running. We just need to finish up the globe. And we've got actual classes going on in here. Which is beautiful. And um, the ballot room is also almost completely done with all of the nice little discussion chairs set up and the ballot box. And we're getting into the research with the guns. Oh my word. This colony is beautiful. Look at us, we're never gonna die. I know that's, it's a very, very bad idea to say that. Very, a very bad idea because in all likelihood, since I've just said that we're never going to die, we're going to get torn to pieces by something terrible. That is kind of how life goes around here, so. You know, just expect that, given my, uh, quite frankly, ridiculous maneuver to make such a bold claim. What is this granite wall doing here? How is that just completely unbuilt? That is very annoying. I do not like that in the slightest. Whoever allowed that granite wall to be unbuilt should be executed immediately! I mean, they won't be because, again, I couldn't find an execution mod despite my best efforts. My best efforts, which got us both a leader mod and some turrets eventually once we actually get around to it. Which is really once we get the research for it. But, um, I, I don't know. I think in terms of the stuff that we could possibly have gotten out of an execution, out of a search for an execution mod, we probably got better things than an actual execution mod. And speaking of execution, Miso, you're dead. You're dead. I'm not even execute him. He's done. You're dead. You took way too long to try to join the colony. If you could execute him, like, in the spooky hut, which I kind of completely forgot existed. Is there... Whose job is it to actually go in there and just put the fuel back in? Huh. Never really considered that. Well, I guess there's someone in this colony that is the basically the keeper of the spooky hut who continually brings uh, wood into there. Ah, oh, nice. Miso's dead. Perfect. Good job, people. Miso is dead. That's beautiful. Uh, Wilkins is probably going to lose her mind, but that's fine. She'll get over it eventually, probably. Named Muffalo One Yoko after being nuzzled. Oh, how nice. Yoko apparently really likes Bradley. Thanks, Bradley. That was nice. Aw, oh, check out our moat. Aw, oh, that is where it's at. Longnose and Bradley are just getting it done. Aw, oh, this defensive line is like nothing that has ever been seen before. Luckily, these things also cost nothing to make. Mostly because, you know, we're literally just digging a hole in the ground. I don't mean to be that guy, but digging a hole in the ground usually doesn't cost all that much stuff. I mean... So long as you already have a shovel, it's not that big of an investment. If you don't have a shovel, I mean, you have to get a shovel, and that could be pretty significant. But outside of that, it's pretty well under control. Oh, nice. 
Well, with the beginnings of the creation of the great moat of our colony, that will bring us for now to the end of this episode. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, like and subscribe. Next time, we are very likely to complete the research for the new turrets, and we should be able to get at least one or two defensive turrets along this line. I'm actually planning, like, I don't know. What are we going to have? Like, seven in here? That's probably not inaccurate. Somewhere around seven. It's going to be beautiful. But until then, thanks for watching, and of course, as always, enjoy the rest of your day.